I'm going to file a new. The page size for both of these is going to be a tabloid. We do need two of them. I'm going to turn off facing pages. As far as the margins go, we'll keep it at half an inch, and you can bleed, so I'll add eighth of an inch on all sides from here. Everything else will remain exactly the same. Got my two different pages to work with. When creating a modular grid, it doesn't have to be as structured as what I have for both of these pages. These are nice, everything has its own little cell. As you saw from some of the examples that I gave you, it's, it could be simply a matter of drawing off a line. So now I've got it divided into two different areas and then subdividing those areas into smaller and smaller planes. That right there could easily be a grid structure. This could be a grid structure along with this. But if I wanted to create something a little bit more complex like this, this would take forever if I had to draw off and measure out every single little one of them. Fortunately, InDesign makes it a lot easier. To make a grid, <coughs> go up to Layout, Create Grid, or Create Guides. I've got Preview turned on. This will allow me to automatically place rows and columns of guides within here. For the first one, I'm going to have 12 rows by, what did I say, 8 columns. Since I have preview turned on, you can see as I increase the number of rows, it increases it on here as well. 12 by 8. That will give us a relatively square looking area. To get the gutter width between the two, <clears throat> that's where this comes in. I think I've already got it pre-typed in. Uh, 0.125, so on both of them. So that will tighten up on those. I've seen some grid structures that don't stay square. You can have some very, very narrow grids. I've seen some grids that look more like this. And so they're much taller than they are wide. Totally, totally fine. That gives you a little bit more playroom to place things within here. <clears throat> the main thing is you're consistent with the placement of the elements. The second thing to consider is if you're fitting the guides to the margins or to the page itself. Right now I've got it set to the margins. I'll tell you what, I'll hit cancel, let me go back up and reset it so you can see the top of my margins. <clears throat> Again, create guides, 12 by 8. If I'm fitting it to the margins versus fitting it to the page, Check out the difference between each of the sets. There's to the page, and there's to the margin. Why would I want to divide from a margin or from a page? What would be the advantage of each? <coughs> well, it depends on what type of layout you're doing. Okay. You know, it's important if you say the margins are beginning with the bleeds and those. Yeah, exactly. If I want my overall look to stay within this half inch margin, I want my column structure to stay within there. So if I wasn't bleeding off to the edge. And so this compensates, this moves everything either in or out based on the margins. You can even see the outer edge, it doesn't have a gutter to it, it's just the solid one. Everything else inside of it stays with this. So for the first one, we'll keep it within the margins. For the second page, we'll move down to page two, create new guides. By the way, you can remove the existing guides or you can make guides on top of guides, which is actually comes in handy as well. Uh, but for the second page, we'll do an 8 by 6 with a gutter of 0. Once you set your gutter to 0, it's just the solid straight lines. For this one, we're going to set it to the page. And there's my grid structure there. From here, it's simply a matter of placing all of my elements within the page itself. Remember, everything we're going to do for this first page will only consist of the student artwork and the student photos themselves. So we'll work within this kind of structure. If you place things within here, so in this case I can either drag and drop or I can make the guide itself. Draw your guides so that they stay within that structure. <clears throat> For instance, I started off at the top inside of here. However, look how tall it is to be in there. What's wrong with this? It's not lined up with the guides. It's not lined up with the guides. It's going over a guide or it's not quite reaching the bottom. 
This is where cropping would come in. I could either pull it up, now it's cropped nice inside of the guides, or if I needed it to fill up this area, I could make my picture larger and reframe it that way. Both are totally acceptable to use. The other thing to pay attention to is your placement within the guides. Common error to make is to do something like this. Why would something like this be a, an issue or a problem? Yeah, I'm filling in my gutter. I don't have that nice space between here. And so make sure you're inside, quote, inside the, the grid structured area. The other thing you can do, and this comes in handy if you're laying out like a yearbook page, go ahead and draw off your boxes. Draw off every single box that I need. I can do it different sizes. Being careful to stay within my grids. I've drawn off three of them. When I go to File and Place, and I choose my information. Let's see, so we're using students. I can choose, I've got three boxes, choose three different photos. When I say OK, it's simply a matter of clicking exactly where they need to go. Make sure you click inside the photo box. And it places it in there. Of course, we need to resize them, automatically scale them, and, and readjust to fit that area. So far, so good, right? Cool. From here, I could readjust it, resize it, place things as necessary. <clears throat> you could add other elements, such as a background color. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Usually I leave color for last. Uh, I'm just going to drop something in there. Place it in the back. Have things overlap each other. Change up the colors there. Eh, I'm getting ahead of myself. I don't really like that color. The first thing that I would do is actually lay out your text. Remember, if you can put your text inside of here, then everything else can fall into place. For mine, Mississippi College Department of Art, I know needs to go on there. Mississippi College. We'll put everything in its own text box. Why would it be a good idea to put everything in its own text box versus putting it all in one text box? Style each piece differently. Yeah. Could do Department of Art. So if I need Mississippi College to stay right there in that width, notice that I accidentally clicked on a guide and moved it around. If you want to lock down your guides, it's usually found under View grids and guides, and we'll lock our guides. Now there's no accidental clicking on it. But yeah, got department. I want department to be nice and big, fall within that structure. Of, maybe of will be right here. And art will be nice and huge. Change up your fonts. Play around with what you can get away with. I am breaking the grid just a little bit to be a little bit more artistic about what I'm doing. But all the other elements, the photographs and the, the body copy that I'm using, I won't let y'all watch me put in body copy, I'll just copy it over. Copy, paste. All fits very well. Of course now I'm starting to break up things. My headline text doesn't have to be at the top of the page. Think about overlapping things. Think about placing it in a different area. But hey, you can see the grid structure kind of coming together very, very quickly. Things are nice and apart from another. I can move things around. Oh, I don't like graduate up there. Maybe I want to put graduate down here. Now it's too close to Mississippi College. Move Mississippi College down. Still stays within that grid. Got to have the contact information. Where can I place that? All of this could be different things to think about for yours. When I created this one, that's what I was thinking about. Change around with your, your photographs. 
one of the most common uh, critiques that I gave for the last project was not enough of the photography or not enough of the imagery was used. For this one, you can get away with using a lot of imagery simply because you've got a nice grid to place things in. Uh, the common problem was they would take one image and that would be their central focal point and they wouldn't have anything else to, to showcase within that design. So that one image almost had to carry the entire, uh, entire composition. With this one, you can have multiple images and you can balance out everything within it. For the second page, same rules apply. You're placing in the photographs <coughs> within that structure. Again, think about overlapping, think about how you would change up your, um, your headline text. And as far as choosing the colors, where did I get these colors from? Got it from the picture. Takes all the guesswork out of that and use the pictures from there. I did break the grid a little bit as far as the type goes from here. If the type, in this case, was drug all the way to the edge, this is what it would look like. Way too close to that edge. It's touching right there. I want to give myself a little bit more of a, a gutter or a space between that. That would be a big no-no. Giving yourself a little bit of breathing room, things work out much, much more nicer with those. All cool? Think about changing your transparencies. Hey, let's see what happened if maybe... Oops. Maybe if I covered up Dr. Miley and part of it, instead of it being solid opaque, was multiplied in or colored in. Ah, so now I'm getting color overlays and color grid structures. All these little things that you can think about as well. Take this one, overlay from here. Y'all go away. This is fine. Not saying I like that, but you can do it. You can get away with it. I'm playing around with it. The main thing I'm looking for today is use your grid structure. Use the underlying elements. How you make it look and how everything is laid out, I'll leave it up to you. When you're finished with this, you will save a PDF and a package file and upload both of those. Just a kind of reminder, I don't harp on this enough, when you do a package file, and I'll step through it and save it. Oh, come on. One of the things that you can package, keep going, keep going, aha, is a PDF version of it. So you don't have to save it twice when you package it up, if you'll include a PDF as the smallest file size, that'll be inside of your package and that'll be part of what we're creating. Cool? Okay. Any questions on, on this? Cool. As with the other ones, due dates, same as the other. Um,